everyone and welcome to my Facebook Live today. My name is Mandy Witherby from Mandy's Papercraft Creations and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Sydney, Australia. It's great to have you with me today. Thank you for joining me, whether or not you are joining live or watching the replay or watching on YouTube later on. Thank you so much for being here. Um, if you're watching live, you'll see that there is a little red live button up the top there so you'll know that you're live with me. If you are um, watching on YouTube later on, there will be um, down the bottom here, there'll be a subscribe button. So if you like what you see, click on subscribe. I would love to have you subscribe to my YouTube channel. And down there too, you'll find a little bell icon. And if you click on that little bell, then you'll get notified every time I upload a new video. So thank you so much. Feel free to comment as you're jumping on or as you're watching the replay. Um, feel free to leave me a comment. That would be wonderful. I always try to reply to um, comments. So as everyone is jumping on, I'll just call this up on my iPad so that I can see all of your comments there and we can get started. So hey Glenda, great to have you here today. How are you? I'm glad that you caught me live. <laughs> hey Amanda, how are you going? Hi Athena. Oh, you're still working? watching me in the background. That's really good. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to call up this um, live on my iPad. There we go. Okay, great. So I can see all of your comments there. So how is everybody today? How was your weekend? We had absolutely beautiful weather here over the weekend um, here in Sydney. It was so gorgeous and really what was like summer. Um, well, almost summer, early parts of summer, and it was really, really beautiful. But today it's turned really cold again. So the weather is very changeable at the moment. <laughs> I guess that's the time of year it is. Hey, Angie, how are you? Great to have you here. So we have got a few joining us already. That is fantastic. Um, I have got some new product to share with you today. Sorry, adjusting my camera again. Never get that right to begin with. <laughs> um, I've got some new products to share with you today and um, we are doing a little bit of winging it today. I have some products, I have a project in mind, but I haven't prepared one ahead of time for you um, to show you. So um, hopefully what is in my head will transpire onto um, paper. <laughs> so at least I've got a bit of direction. So that's always a good place to start. Hey Leslie, I'm great, thank you. How are you? Great to have you here today with us. Um, oh, Angie said she's better than yesterday. Oh, well, you're not well yesterday, Angie. I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm glad to hear that you're feeling better today. So, um, hey Rose, how are you going? Now, tell me, did anyone get some crafting done over the weekend? Let me know, let me know. I have been designing for my upcoming Technique Club class. Um, if you don't know about my Technique Club, let me tell you a little bit about my Technique Club. So with my Technique Club, um, each month I present a new technique to the participants that come along to that class. Um, I call it a club because you can subscribe but you can also join as a guest and come at any time in any month. So that's totally fine. So you have two different options there. Um, but we have um, some beautiful projects. So I choose a technique and I present that technique and we make some samples. We have, um, so we usually do two, four, we do do two full size card projects. And then we do a little um, three by four sample, which we keep in what I call a technique notebook. So it's a little folder. Actually, I'll show you. Let me grab mine and I'll show you. So I've got, this is my little technique notebook. And um, so in here we keep a, and I have decorated up the front there, as you can see, did a bit of stamping on there and made it a little bit pretty. So this is one of our six by eight um, albums that are available in the uh, annual catalog. And I've got the um, pocket pages in there. And so on the first page, we've got a list of all the techniques. So you can see there, I might go this side actually. You can see there we've got lots of techniques that we've done already. Um, I have this as a PDF. So anybody that joins in with Technique Club gets a copy of that as well as the um, basis for the cover. 
and or you can make your own cover um, and then you can stamp on it and pretty it all up and then every month we do um, a different project and see how I've got the little samples there so we pop the little samples there and then I also give them a supply list that they'll need to be able to create that tech or use that technique and then an instruction card at the bottom to explain or at the top depending on the, con the configuration of your pages some are at the bottom some are at the top um, instructions there of how to actually do the technique um, and to uh, do that uh, project sample technique sample and then we've got a resource folder of all those wonderful techniques that we can then use in our other projects so it's super fun super cool um, it's good for me as well because it gets me creating with some of those techniques that often get forgotten um, because sometimes I'm in such a hurry that I'm just thinking of trying to get a card made quickly and I don't think to incorporate a lot of technique um, so it's really great for me as well as um, the people that join me in those classes. So I hold it every month on the fourth Saturday of every month. It is online at the moment. We used to meet in person, but since COVID we've moved it online. Um, and I pre-record that video. And I just thought I'd talk a little bit, a bit about that because I think sometimes people don't understand um, what it is when I say Technique Club and they think they can't join and they're not really sure um, how it all works. So um, yeah, it's all pre-recorded and it usually goes for around about three hours, the class. And because it's pre-recorded, it means that you can watch it anytime. Even though I set a class date, that's when I release the video to the class participants. But really once I've emailed you the link to that um, tutorial, the video tutorial, you can do it at any time. So you don't have to do it necessarily on that day or you can do it in spits and spurts. If you don't have three hours solid to sit down there and do the whole class, you can do your little sample first and have a little practice with the technique. And then you can go and make the projects um, at a later time whenever it suits you. So it's a really great way of um, doing a class online because you can do it at your own um, pace and you can pause, rewind, fast forward, all of those things. So it's really, really good. Um, so if you would like more information about that, let me know. So what I get people to do is to just put, pop in an order. So I will set up an event, which I did on, um, just yesterday it was actually. So you'll find that in my event section for our technique this month. And, um, they're all the information about technique club and the class are there. And so it explains, um, about your ordering and there's an ordering link there. I let you know what um, products I've used to create the projects and to um, create the sample for the technique. Now, specific techniques are going to need specific products or um, tools, so I always list them. And if they're ones that you already have, you can substitute and use other ones. Even sometimes some of my class participants in Technique Club, they'll use different stamp sets that will still work with that technique as well. So that's always an option. So check it out. If you would like um, an information sheet about my um, Technique Club, let me know because I would love to email that to you. Um, and as I said, there's two different options. So you can choose to subscribe for six months or basically attend six consecutive months of Technique Club. And then at the end of that six months, I will reward you with a thank you shopping spree. So you'll get $25 in um, shopping spree for those six consecutive months and you get that at the end of that six month period. Or if you would like to just pop in and pop out in, and pick which techniques you would like to do in the different months, you are welcome to just come at any time. You just wouldn't be eligible for that shopping spree. But you are, um, in, you are welcome to come and um, do those that technique club um, any of the months that you are, um, would like to. Now it is only open for um, Australian residents um, because of the ordering um, system for Technique Club and I can't um, I can't sell to anybody outside so I apologize if you're outside of Australia and you think that it sounds really exciting um, but yeah I can only sell to um, people in Australia so um, yeah so anyway so let me know um, it's really fun and it's I love creating for Technique Club it's uh i love playing with all the different techniques and it's we always have <laughs> we 
we always have our baby wipes nearby because a lot of the techniques um, are messy ones so <laughs> it's fun it's fun inky fingers um, yeah show that we have been creative and been having fun so that's a little bit about technique club so I would love to invite you to join my technique club so check it out in the event section and as I said if you would like more information um, either send me a private message or an email and you can email me at Mandy's papercraft creations at gmail.com and um, I'd love to email you um, more information and the registration form if you would like to sign up for the six months or even if you just want the information sheet that's fine too so um, yeah so that's a little bit about technique club and that's what I um, spent a lot of my time on the weekend doing actually was preparing for that um, oh, I need to take a breath now all that talking <laughs> um, oh hi Maswari it's great to have you here today I'm good thank you just a little bit breathless the um, change in the weather's play been playing havoc with my asthma so just have to take some deep breaths every so often so if you see me do that I'm okay I just need to uh, catch my breath um, oh Angie said she got bitten by a spider and it made her really sick oh no ah oh, that's no good at all Angie I was just talking about spiders with somebody on the phone last night actually we were talking about um, whitetail spiders what sort of spider did you get bitten by that's really that's not good that it made you that sick um, Athena said she's been making lots of cards 150 photo Christmas postcards Wow 20 Stampin up Christmas cards as well oh wow so you made 170 cards on the weekend Athena that's amazing oh my goodness <laughs> I made three I think three projects for technique club but the technique ones always take me a lot longer because I'm always playing with the techniques and testing things out and things like that. Um, so that's my excuse. But 170 cards, that's amazing. Well done. Congratulations. That's amazing. <laughs> um, hey, Julie, great to have you here. It's good to see you. Hi, Kathleen. How are you today? Great to have you here. Oh, Kathleen's getting her second vaccination on Wednesday and she cannot wait. Oh, hope it all goes well, Kathleen. Um, that'll be really good. Yeah. So anyway, um, so that's what's happening with Technique Club. I'm going to be designing my next um, product class for next month. Um, so that'll be coming up soon I won't be having a creative kit night this month because the day that I would normally have that is the day I get my second jab actually so um, I might not be feeling up to it for a couple of days after that so I'm not going to have the creative kit night this month but I'll be back with that next month as well so lots happening busy 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 all right, so let me tell you about a couple of Stampin' Up! things that have been happening. Um, you may have seen, if you've been following my business page, you may have seen in the last week, I posted about two new kits that have been released, which is super exciting. Um, one of them is the Expression in Colour, or Expressions in Colour, Paper Pumpkin Kit, and this one has been released globally. For those of you that don't know what Paper Pumpkin is, Paper Pumpkin is a kit subscription that is only available in um, North America, usually, but a couple of times a year, Stampin' Up! release global Paper Pumpkin kits that, they, um, be, that are available throughout all of the markets that Stampin' Up! are in all over the world. Um, and this time we've got this beautiful one. It's so, so pretty. I've ordered mine. I'm waiting for it to come. Hopefully it'll come this week. Um, but it has three, I think it's three different designs. And I can't remember if there were three or four of each design. Does it tell me on here? No, this is just a quick little flyer, this one. But I posted up some photos of some of them the other day. Um, and they are really really beautiful so this kit is only um, $37 and the only thing additional you'll need for the kit is a pair of um, scissors I think to cut the twine perhaps I'm not sure 100% but often with our kits we need scissors and everyone has scissors so that's okay and you may need or you will need a, um, a block wait let me grab 
so you'll need a block. I've got my stamp already on there. There's a little sneak peek of our project for today. Um, so you'll need a clear block to put your stamps onto. Um, but everything else you need to create those projects are in the kit and it's really beautiful. So you'll be able to find that in my online store. Um, if you go to my blog, you'll find my um, shop button there at the top or you can go to my demonstrator website. I'll give you those, or I'll hold them up actually, but they will be down on my desk. There you go. So there's two ways you can find my online stop, um, shop. Stop. Yes, yeah, stop at my shop. <laughs> so either go via my blog and click on the shop button, or go to my um, demonstrator website and you can click on shop now there. So either way is fine. Actually, on my website, um, if you do go to my website, on the weekend, I spent time and I updated all of my classes, all of my Facebook Lives for the rest of this year. So if you go there, you'll see all of my um, event dates there. If you want to know what's coming up, what's happening and, and um, when I hold my classes, etc. You'll be able to see all of those there in the calendar. Okay. So, um, and if you want to subscribe to my newsletter to keep up to date with all of the Stampin' Up! happenings and all of my news, then you can go to my blog because there is a um, sub, uh, subscribe button for my newsletter there at the top of my blog as well. So two different ways to find lots of things. So you might want to check both of those out too and find out what I've got on each of those because I've got different things in the different platforms. So lots and lots of information everywhere, which is super cool. Um, all right, so let me just go back to my comments now. Uh, there's a few more comments. Oh, hey, Vanessa, great to have you here. I was just, I just finished telling everybody about my technique club, actually. So, um, yeah, so that's exciting. And then I was talking about the kit that, well, that was the first one. I've got something else to share in a moment. Um, Vanessa said she's just ordered this kit too and can't wait for it to arrive. Yeah, they're really beautiful, aren't they? I saw the, the projects and they're so, so pretty. And Tina's here too. Hi, Tina. Great to see you this week. How are you going? It's great to have you here. Oh, Tina just said too, she's ordered the kit as well. Fantastic. So beautiful. So, um, so that was the first one. The other one I was going to let you know about, the second kit that has just released, is um, one of the ones that we got a little sneaky peek um on well in the mini catalog so if you haven't seen this mini catalog this is a beautiful beautiful catalog um, and if you don't already have one and you don't have a demonstrator here in australia please let me know because i would love to send one of these out to you um, filled with beautiful beautiful products but if you have one of these catalogs you might have seen on page what page are we on six there's a little sneaky peek here of one of the um, Christmas card kits. Now that one has just been released and it's an all-inclusive kit. So everything you need to make these projects are in the kit, including a block, including the stamps to um, stamp your greetings and stamp the little um, backgrounds, the little stars in the background, etc. So everything is in that kit and it is super, super cute. I don't know if you can see you should be able to see there a little sneak peek. That one has two projects in the kit and I think there's four of each from memory. I've ordered that one as well. So I'm waiting for that one to arrive too. But it is super cute. So be sure to look out for that one as well. Again, you can go to my blog or to my um, demonstrator website to be able to find those. And I'll have this down on my desk when we tip um, the camera down onto my desk as well so that you can see those there. So check those out. Um, lots and lots of fun things. Now, just to remind anyone as well, or if you're watching for the first time today, you may not know, at the moment we're also celebrating celebration. So for those of you that don't know, during celebration, with every $90 purchase, um, you get to choose a free product from this celebration brochure. And there's lots and lots of beautiful products in here. There's stamp sets, there's dies, there's um, designer series paper, which is what we call our patterned papers. 
and you get to choose those for free with a purchase of $90. Now we do have some products in there as well that are for if you purchase $180. So there's some higher um, valued products in there that you can choose when you get to $180. Or if you choose to, instead of getting one of the $180 products, you can get two of the $90 products for free. So with a $90 purchase or a $180 purchase. So again, if you would like to get um, one of these brochures, if you don't already have one, then let me know. I can send it to you with a mini catalog. And as well, we also have our big annual catalog. We've got three catalogs at the moment. So we've got lots and lots of products to choose from. So if you don't already have a demonstrator here in Australia and you would love these catalogs, let me know and I'd love to send them out to you. If you prefer to view them online, I do have a PDF version of those available to view on my blog. So if you go to mandyspapercraftcreations.blogspot.com, down on the right hand side column, you'll see each of those there. You click on the little image there and it'll open up the PDF and then you can have a look. And of course, all of those products are in my online store. I always like to have a paper copy though too because I find as I'm flicking through the, the, um, the book, then you find more and more things that you didn't notice before and I like to use, you might have noticed I've got sticky notes, I like to sticky note things that I'm interested in or and create my wish list. You can see on this one my wish, these are my wish list ones and my wish list I've nearly filled. So I've still just got a couple of things on my wish list which I've been getting gradually. Um, but yeah, I always like to have a paper copy but some people don't, some people prefer online and that's all good too. So I've got both options available to you. So please let me know, that would be awesome. All right, let me catch up on some of these comments now. Um, Tina said, I'm going to send one of these kits to my stepdaughter and granddaughter to make, uh, to make, to help her with their Melbourne lockdown. That is a great idea, Tina, and I'm sorry that I forgot to mention that. Thank you for reminding me. Our kits make an awesome gift. They're really inexpensive, um, especially with school holidays coming up soon as well. Um, we've had lockdowns and all sorts of things. So people have been looking for things to do and coming up with the school holidays. We don't know what that's going to look like, especially here in New South Wales. Um, so these kits are awesome and there's lots of kits to choose from, not just the ones I've shown today, but there are 10 other kits as well available. There's some project kits and some card kits. There's some some that um, are stamping kits and some that are non-stamping kits. And some of those, they're really easy to put together. So even the kids could put them together, especially the, the non-stamping kits. Um, well, they could probably do any of them really. Some of them are just a little bit more fiddly, um, but not difficult. And you get full instructions in the kits as well. So everything's there that you need. So check all of those out. If you're going to uh, my online store, if you click on um, kit collection, that's where you'll find all of those kits, including the Christmas kit I just showed you. Oh, that's called Chris Christmas Whimsy. Is that what it's called? Oh, I don't have the flyer and it doesn't tell me in the catalog. I think it's called, yeah, it's called Christmas Whimsy. Um, the paper pumpkin kit, that is found in a slightly different spot. Um, I don't think that's with the other kit collections kits. This one will be will show up and you'll probably get there I think there's a banner across the top when you go into the online store and you can click on that Otherwise um, You'll click on what's new. I think it says what's new click on that and that will come up So hopefully that will help you find them Now also to let me just quickly tell you that during celebration not only can you um uh, get you uh, let me start again not only can you redeem products for free with qualifying orders as I mentioned before but also to um, if you become part of the Stampin' Up! community during celebration which is the the it ends on the 30th of September um, then you can not only get your starter kit for $169 and choose $235 worth of product. So you're already getting freebies there. Um, but you can also choose a free bundle from the mini catalog to add to your starter kit absolutely free. And that's up to $104 worth of value. 
um, in those bundles. And as well as that, you get free shipping on that starter kit um, order. And then from there, you get 20% discount on all of your Stampin' Up! products. So it's awesome. And you're joining a wonderful creative community where you'll make new friends. We have so much fun together, so much inspiration for, um, from each other um, and the wider Stampin' Up! family as well. And not only that, we've got a demonstrator only event coming up soon in November and the registration um, is going to be ending soon. And so we would love to have you come and join us in that. It's super fun. This event is every year. It's called On Stage. You'll probably hear me talk a lot about it leading up to the time and probably afterwards as well. It's really, really exciting and we have a great time. Um, it is going to be online this year and we did it online for the first time last year. Prior to that, it was in person, um, but it was really fantastic and it was so great. Uh, I had some of my team come last year and I've got some uh, more of my team coming again this year to the online event. So it's going to be super, super fun and we would love you ha to have you join us. So if that is something that you think um, you might be interested in, if you've got a long wish list, there's lots of Stampin' Up! products that you love. Um, then consider joining and coming and joining us in our stamping community. We have a great time together um, and there's so many perks. But I have spoken already so much this morning or this afternoon, I should say. Um, I think we probably should get on to creating our project. But if you would like more information about joining Stampin' Up! and about joining my team, um, then please get in contact with me and I'd love to give you some more information and answer any of your questions that you might have as well. Okay, um, let's see. I'm just checking all of my comments. Oh, Tina said I. Um, she's hoping that her stepdaughter... Uh, or she's hoping that her stepdaughter will enjoy it. Um, she isn't coping very well with three kids at home, so hoping it will give her a bit of me time. Yeah, that's a really great idea. There's a lot of um, parents that are struggling at the moment with homeschooling and things like that because of the current situation. So that is a great idea to um, send uh, one of the kits to the mums and um, to give them a little bit of, um, a little bit of me time as Tina said give them a little bit of creative outlet and perhaps it can be something they can sit down and do with the children that's fun as well rather than the stress of trying to homeschool them um, so yeah that's a really great idea um, hey Laura Laura's here too Laura said um, they just had lockdown in New Zealand and it's been crazy Auckland's still in lockdown um, Laura's in um, Palmerston North and it was super hard for them and um, she had Mr. Seven and Miss Three and found it difficult especially because she was still working. Yeah I really feel for all of you parents who are trying to work from home and um, have to have your children schooling at home it must be really difficult at the moment. Um, I'm thankful that my children are grown up and um, but the you know we still are in lockdown and there's still different challenges but quite different to having little ones I don't know how I would be coping either so um yeah yeah definitely more difficult with children Tina yes yeah yeah we're in our 12th week yep I think it's about 12 weeks I think I remember saying last week we were up to 11 so this would be 12 so what's that nearly three months hmm yep um okay ah oh, tina said she's so looking forward to on stage yes it's going to be awesome um tina and i used to go to the in-person on stage events together before we were doing online everything online and uh, we used to have a great time uh, it was really wonderful and hopefully eventually we will get back to in-person on stage events and um that will be fantastic all right so who is ready to see what we're playing with today? I think what I'll do is I will tip the camera down onto my desktop and I will show you what we're going to be playing with. Um, and as I said, I've got an idea of this project in my mind. I hope that it transpires onto paper because I haven't tested this out yet. Um, but we'll see how we go. <laughs> and I'm sure that you're all going to help me too because you always do. 
um, but I hope that in playing with these project uh, these products too it might give you some more ideas as well um, Laura said woohoo on stage will be fun and she's signing up this week yay that's awesome Laura you'll love it it's so will this be your first one Laura or did you go last year as well I can't remember um, when you joined up but um, yeah it's really it's really an awesome fun event on stage we always have a great time and we get to see new upcoming products and catalogs and we get to order some of the new products too before anybody else which is super exciting um are oh, you all part of it last year as well great so this is your second one that's exciting all right so i'm going to cover up the camera now and tip it down onto the desktop so just bear with me for a moment all right I'll flip my cameras. Now it will be a little bit noisy and clunky and squeaky as I adjust my stand. So just bear with me for a moment. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Tighten up my clamps again so that everything stays where it should and doesn't fall down on me. There we go. Okay. And just adjust my lighting and we'll see my iPad keeps freezing on me as well so um, my usual delay that I have in the feed when I'm watching it back on my iPad is even more pronounced at the moment and this happened last week too I think the um, the internet is having a hard time and I've got all the family home today actually so um, it's probably having a bit of a a uh, a little bit of a heart attack <laughs> trying to keep up with all with everything Laura said she absolutely loved on stage last year and the sneak peek is awesome yes it's one of the perks of being a demonstrator is that we get um, insight into the upcoming new products all right so my my um, return feed on my iPad is still a bit lagging but I'm going to continue on oh I think it's catching up now all right now I can see my camera is crooked so I'll just tweak that a little bit to get hopefully get that a bit straighter and I'm just watching for that to catch up oh now I've gone too far the other way there we go let's see how that looks um, Laura said her brother is getting married on the same weekend that on stage is on but she's hoping to catch some of the lives in between oh wow that'll be a really busy weekend for you then Laura Okay, so did I get that straight or it's still crooked? I think it's still crooked. I'll get it right in a minute. <laughs> Some weeks I do so well and I get it straight first time. And then other weeks it takes me a little bit of tweaking to, um, to get it uh, set up exactly straight. All right, so mini catalogue. We are going to be playing with some beautiful new products from the mini catalogue. Um, but before I do that, I was just, I had these out of my desk and I just wanted to quickly show you. Um, because I was talking about Celebration before and talking about some of the um, free products in there, I have a couple of them out on my desk that I haven't played with yet. And I just, I'm not playing with them today, but I just thought I'd show you. I've got the really cute counting sheep. This is a, an item that you can choose for free with a $90 order. Um, these little sheep are just so adorable and I've seen so many cute projects made with these. So um, look out for that one. And then as well, there are coordinating dies to cut out the sheep. And then you've got this cute little fence. You've got a sun and some clouds um, and some little party things there as well. This one, um, the dies that coordinate, you can also get them for a $90 order. So if you put in an order of $180, you can get the whole set. So you can choose both of them um, for free with a $180 order. Or if you just want the stamps, just a $90 order. Um, as well, I also got last week this one. So this is another one of the um, products that you can choose for free with a $90 order, the texture and textures and frames. I haven't had a chance to play with this one yet, but there are some awesome textures on there. And I think textures are always great to have in your stash because they come in really, really handy um, for your projects. So that's another great one. So look out for those too. 
Oh, hi Tina Marie, how are you? It's great to see you today. Great to have you with us. So, at the celebration. Now, the mini catalogue, let me show you what we're going to be playing with today. Today, we're going to be playing with the beautiful, gorgeous leaves bundle. And you can find that in the catalogue on page 47 if you have the catalogue. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful um, bundle. So we've got these beautiful stamps here and we have coordinating dies. So um, you can purchase them individually. You can purchase just the stamp set or you can purchase just the dies or vice versa. Um, or you can purchase them together and save yourself 10%. So as I was saying in, in my live last week, I can't remember if it was on my Monday live or my Thursday live, but I was saying that so many times, and you think I would have learned my lesson, but no, I still manage to do it every so often. Um, I'll just buy the stamp set and think, no, don't need the dies. I'll just buy the stamp set. And then down the track, I think, oh, I wish I had have bought those dies. And then I put in my, my order for the dies. But what happens then is I'm paying full price for both item. So instead of that, I always suggest now to everybody, and I'm suggesting and reminding myself too, if you're going to buy the stamp set and it has coordinating dies or a coordinating punch, get them together at the same time because then you will save 10%. All right, and who doesn't love a saving? Like we all want to save money, right? So yeah, if you're purchasing the stamp set, make sure to get the dies as well. So page 47, um, and there's some beautiful samples in here as well, which can, if you're unsure of how to get started using a product, always check the samples in your catalog because there's lots and lots of beautiful samples there in the catalog. So here are the stamp set and the dies, and you can, um, in the catalogue, the images of the dies are quite small, so it's hard to see them. So it's always great to see them um, in person. So let me take these out of here. Now, I haven't used these until today, and I was just doing some colour samples um, this afternoon before going live to de decide which colours we were going to be using today. There's those gorgeous dies. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? So good. And... There's even a branch in there. I was really excited about the branch because the branch um, you can use with so many other stamp sets. We've got birds, we've got other animals um, that would be great to sit on those branches. Um, lots and lots of different ways that you can use them with lots of other out of our nature themed um, stamp sets as well. Um, and then you've got all these beautiful leaves. So that's what we're going to be playing with today. Now, this stamp set doesn't have any sentiments in it. You might have noticed that. So I've pulled out um, another stamp set with a sentiment. So I'll tell you about that when we get to that. But let me show you all the beautiful colours that we're going to be playing with today. I've got quite a few here. So these are all the gorgeous colours that we're going to be playing with today. I've got Mango Melody, Pumpkin Pie, Cajun Craze, Merry Merlot, Cherry Cobbler. This one is actually um, Crumb Cake, but my label has faded and gone a funny colour. Um, and we've got Soft Suede as well. So these are the gorgeous colours. And do you ever get inspired by things that you see out in the world? Nature, clothing, fabric, um, anything like that? I do and so I took a photo when I was out one day and here it is here I printed it today the colors on my printer haven't come out exactly as the photo but this was giving me a bit of a gauge today as to the colors that I wanted to use and one of the leaves um, or the leaves from this particular tree that had dropped is similar to this leaf here so I started playing with color today and I was just doing lots and lots of different colours to test them all out. And you know what else I discovered today? A lot of my ink pads needed refilling because most of these colours are not ones I use regularly. Um, so I had to refill every single one of my ink pads today. Or, well, every single one of these colours that we're using today. <laughs> so that's where my ideas started um, from the photo 
um, incorporating the stamp set, playing with colour. So I'm showing you this to give you an idea of my creative process when I'm trying to design a project. So that's kind of where I started. Then I pulled out some um, natural looking twines because I thought these will go really well. Um, as well as that, I've also got some early espresso um, faux suede trim. So I might even end up using that. I just pulled out a few things that I thought would go with this neutral um, colored theme. And I've got some of our beautiful brushed metallic um, adhesive back dots, which are from the mini catalog as well. This isn't a full pack because I've cut some um, and taken some out of there. Um, but yeah, these are just gorgeous and I thought they would go perfectly with these colours. So that's what we're going to be playing with today. I've also got some embossing folders. I pulled out two different ones and I'm deciding which one I'm going to use. So I've got the Timber 3D embossing folder and the Bark. Um, these are both gorgeous and I think they will both work because we're talking about trees and leaves and all those natural things. So that's where um, I've started and I've pulled out all my cardstock pieces to match all of those colours so we can get started. So I think what I'm going to do is start with a base of crumb cake. So let's create a card base with our crumb cake cardstock. So I'm going to pop my photo up here in front of me. Oops, there we go. Pop my photo up here so that I've got that as a reference for my colours. And I'll bring in... Let me just move all of my catalogs out of the way. Hang on one sec. I'll just put them on the other side. My iPad keeps freezing all the time watching this feedback, which is very annoying. Um, oh, Leslie said she has just ordered this bundle and she can't wait to get it. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I chose the right one today then for you, Leslie, didn't I? There we go. And I didn't even know. <laughs> um... Oh, Athena says she's bought this one too and hasn't played with it yet. Oh, awesome. Well, hopefully I'll be able to give you some ideas. All right, so I'm taking a piece of A4 cardstock and I'm going to cut that in half at 14.85 centimetres. Okay, here in Australia we work with metric and our card bases are A4 size, which is different to the American size. I'm then going to score that in the middle at um, 10 and a half centimetres with our scoring blade, which is the light colour blade. Okay, and that gives us a nice crease there. And then I'm going to fold the card and we've got our card base. We're going to have a landscape card, so horizontal. And I'll just take my bone folder and burnish that folded edge there. So that that gives us a nice crisp fold. Let's do it on both sides because this cardstock is quite thick. All right, so we've got our base. Um, I know that I'm going to be stamping on uh, very vanilla today because I think the very vanilla goes really nicely with the neutral tones rather than the white. So I've got some already cut down. I'll grab a piece of um, the very vanilla and. What I was deciding, yes, this is the one I'm going to stamp on. So I was trying to decide, I'm going to have a strip going across the middle there. And this is where my, um, all of my measurements are going to start now because I haven't measured anything yet. So I need to work out the width that I want to have this panel that's going to go across the front of my card. So I'm just having a look to see. I probably will do six centimeters six centimeters wide and it's going to go all the way across so I don't need to cut the um, the length I'm just going to cut the width at six centimeters there we go so I use my cutting blade there and we'll take the six centimeters um, while I've got my cutter out so now I've got that now I need to put that I need to have a bit of color behind that but as well as that I was wondering about putting a um, using those embossing folders to add some texture to the background. And I think what I might do actually is I might do another piece of crumb cake, the same size as the card base and actually emboss that. So let's cut. So this is half of an A4 sheet. I'm going to cut this in half again at 10 and a half. 
So instead of scoring this time, I'm going to cut. And that now is the same size as my card front. Okay, so that's the same size. Let's just double check. Yep, same size as my card front. So I think what I'm going to do to begin with, so that's my starting point. I am going to run this piece through with, let's see, which embossing folder will I use? Will I use the bark or will I use the timber? Let's have a look. I haven't used the timber one very much yet. Um, I have used the bark one a few times. Hmm. I'm going to use the, I'm going to go with this one. Um, you might notice so I'm gonna use the bark one. You might notice in my photograph that's inspiring my card today, there's a couple of um, timber sleepers in the background there. I don't know if you can see them there. They're sort of gray sleepers there. They look like they've got the texture of this bark um, embossing folder. So I think I'm gonna go with that to kind of uh, keep in the theme of my photograph that's inspiring me today. Oh, Fee said she loves this bundle too, and she's also just ordered it. Oh, that's awesome. Lots of people have just ordered this one. Fantastic. Now I'm going to have the um, the design going across ways across my card because we're having a horizontal card. So I'll just pop that in. Oh, I better put that in straight. And I'll bring my, um, my large start. Oh, that's the one I chose, Tina. Tina just said bark. Yep, that's the one I chose. Perfect. We're in sync today. I'll bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine. We, I've got the big machine out and the small one today. But this um, embossing folder won't fit through the small machine. So we need our large machine. Oops, hang on. I've got to use the right, tra the right um, mats too. So we want our base plate and our 3D embossing folder. And then I think this one's really thick. So I think this one... I use just one of the clear plates on top. I'll know as soon as I feel it when I go to crank it through if it feels right. No, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like enough tension. So I'll bring in my embossing plate. I couldn't remember which plates I use for this particular embossing plate. That feels better. Okay. Yeah, so it's the grey embossing plate that we need on top. Clunk, clunk, sorry for the bump. There we go. Oh, gorgeous. Look at that. Oh, look at the texture in that. Isn't that beautiful? Now you can use it either side depending on the look that you're going for. Let's move the machine out of the way. Let's move that out of our way for the moment. So we do have some little embossing folders that fit the mini machine, um, but uh, this one was the one I wanted to use and so we needed the big machine for that. Now because this, um, this has got beautiful texture on it, so we could keep it um, just like that, which would be fantastic, but I want to really highlight the texture in that cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in some crumb cake. Um, hmm, will I use crumb cake or will I use the soft suede? I'll go with the crumb cake first and we'll see. I'm going to just highlight the texture in this um, cardstock from the embossing folder first. Now, which way do I want to use it? I want to use it that way so that the design is popping up out of the um, cardstock. So that's the embossed side. And I'm going to take one of my blending brushes and load that up with ink. Just dab it off on your um, scrap paper first to make sure that it's um, not too concentrated. And then when we use our blending brushes, well, actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to use a blending brush. I'm going to use a dauber. I'm going to use a dauber because I find when doing it with embossed backgrounds, um, it defines the detail in, not that one, the other one. It defines the detail in the um, embossing better with a dauber. Because I did some testing on that uh, last week, I think it was. 
crumb cake that's the one and I'll bring out soft suede as well in case I decide to go with soft suede oh hey Deborah how are you great to have you with us today all right so crumb cake let's take our dauber now our sponge daubers again I'll just dab that off our sponge daubers um, they come in a pack of five and then you can use them with your inks now you can wash them out they've got a little foam um, tip on them you can wash them out and reuse them on different colors but I just like to have a, one dauber per color because I like to um, not have to fuss with washing them out <laughs> it's so much quicker and easier just to have them there so if you just use that dauber this is the same color so this is crumb cake now I did just re-ink this today so it is very inky but if you just use color on color so this is crumb cake ink on crumb cake cardstock but you can see how it's really bringing out the detail in that background now it's a little bit darker than what I had planned but that's okay and I'm just rubbing that dauber across the top of that um, design the top of that to bring out that beautiful embossing so see the difference that it makes so that's what the cardstock looked like without any ink on it but now I've added the ink you can really see the design popping out of the cardstock that a beautiful embossed um, background so there we go all right so that's looking quite rustic and lovely that's what we want this is going to be a very rustic card I need to replace this dauber soon this one's been used and used and used and it's starting to uh, wear out a little bit so then that's going to be our card front like so and then we're going to have our strip now I'm going to need to we're going to be stamping on this strip and I'm going to need to have um, just trying to decide yeah I'm going to need to have a bit of color behind this strip to make that pop but what I'm going to do first I think is do the stamping on the strip first and then decide what color I'll put behind it because I might just put one of the um, browns so I might put some soft suede or some early espresso but then I might decide that maybe we need a pop of color so I might choose one of the colors um, instead so let's do that I'm not going to adhere anything together yet because we're going to um, also be using some twine so we want to make sure that we can still get that twine wrapped around I'll just turn that paper over so that that's not looking yucky and ugly all right now in the stamp set we've got all these beautiful leaves here um, I was playing with just this this leaf here to create that which is what the what my photo looked like uh, so it's up to you as to whether or not you use a combination of all of the different leaves or you just use the one particular leaf but I think today I'm going to use just that one particular leaf because um, I'm being inspired by this photograph and so I think I'll go with that now you've also too got some splatter you've got some splatter backgrounds and you've got some timber background as well so you could stamp them first and then um, stamp your leaves totally up to you which way you would want to do it yourself um, I think for me um, I might do a little bit of the splatter in the background let's see how that looks so I'll use the large one I think and we'll see how that looks in the background um, oops I'll put that down like so and I'll get my block and pick that up with my block I might need to put that at a little bit of an angle there we go um, I think for me I will use the oh you know what I'm gonna bring in soft uh, Sahara sand I think because that is lighter Oops, there we go that's a bit lighter than the crumb cake so we might do that one just in the background now I haven't re-inked this one today so I hope I might do a little bit of a test on my grid paper first I'll just turn that back over to the yucky side oh this one hasn't got much ink on it either goodness me what's happening with all of my ink pads all right well this gives me the opportunity of showing you 
how to ink up your ink pads. So I'll quickly grab my reef, my ink refill and I'll show you how to um, top up your ink pads when they get a little bit dry. Okay. So we want soft suede. I've got all of my ink refills in here. Unfortunately, Stampin' Up! doesn't sell these wide cases anymore because these were perfect for storing all of your ink refills. This is how I store mine in here like this and then they all stand up on my shelf beautifully. But um, yeah, unfortunately Stampin' Up! doesn't sell these wide cases anymore. So we keep on asking them to bring them back. Hopefully they will one day because they're super awesome for storage. I use them to store lots of other things as well. I use them to store my embellishments also. So we just take the lid off and just move that out of the way. And what I do is I just squeeze the bottle and I just run that across my ink, my stamp pad all the way across. Can you see that there? And make sure you get all of the surfaces. Oh yeah, this one does take feel a little bit dry. And then we'll go in the opposite direction as well because this one is really, really dried out. This one actually does get a lot of use, the Sahara Sand. We do use this one a lot. So that's probably why this one's a little bit dry. We've soaked up all that ink on our beautiful stamps. There we go. Then what I do is I take, I've got an old um, bone folder that I use specifically just for my inking. And I just then rub gently over the surface of the ink pad to distribute that ink um, and push that down into the pad. Now, if you don't have a bone folder, you can purchase these from um, my online store. Um, you can find them, if you're looking for them, you can find them in the annual catalog in the tools section, which is towards the back of the catalog. But if you um, don't have a bone folder, you could use the back of a plastic spoon um, you could use an old um, gift voucher card or something like that. Just make sure that you don't, whatever you use doesn't have any sharp edges because you don't want to tear up your um, ink pad. And then I just give it a little clean on a baby wipe, which is really easy to do. Um, Deborah said, can you put ink on the inside of your embossing folder to highlight the texture. Yes, that's another um, technique that you can do as well, Deborah. Um, you can roll, we used to have um, sponge rollers and I actually did, in, in, in my um, technique club, I actually did do that one month as the technique that we focused on. Um, and you can use a fo foam roller to uh, rub, roll the ink onto the inside, one side of your embossing folder. And then you put your cardstock in and then you run that through your machine um, and it makes the detail in that embossed image, uh, in that, yeah, in that embossed um, cardstock really pop. I haven't tried it with um, the new brushes, the blending brushes. I'm not sure if it would work as well with the blending brushes, if you get an even, um, coating of the the uh, ink but um, yeah I should try that one day and just see you can use the daubers as well but with the daubers you can sometimes get a little bit more concentration in color um, so you'd certainly want to do a few tests first to to see how that would turn out oh that's better look at that beautiful all right so let's do a few little splodges I'm not sure how this is going to look but we'll do a few of these across the card. Whoops. And then we'll stamp the leaves on top and see how that looks. It might be a little bit too much. We might have to um, just have just the uh, leaves on their own. But we'll give that a go and see. I love that texture. So if you didn't have the bark embossing folder, you could actually do this in the background instead. Um, so I'll just give this one a clean and... Guess what I bought? I bought new chamois. I got two new chamois and this one is the one I've been using today. And look, it's inky already. How sad. They don't stay nice for very long. <laughs> but that's okay. They do a really great job of cleaning your stamps. So the Simply Chamois, you can also find them in the annual catalogue. They are a great cleaning tool. 
All right, so let's bring out all of these beautiful colors. So we've got Mango Melody, and I'm gonna line them all up on um, my desk. I've got Pumpkin Pie. I've got Cajun Craze. I know it's been a while, Tina Marie, since I've had a new um, Simply Shammy. They look beautiful when they're brand new. <laughs> I've got Cherry Cobbler. Whoops. And um, I've got Soft Suede as well. There we go. And I did have um, Crumb Cake too. So Crumb Cake as well. I think we're going to need to make two, two rows here. All right, so we've got them. Oh, I just stuck my finger in that. Good thing I've got a baby wiper right nearby. There we go. All right, let's shimmy those across a little bit. Okay. And as I said, I'm just going to use that leaf and I'm just going to basically build up the colors. So I'll see how it looks on top of here. I'm not sure if they're going to show up really well. Um, perhaps what I should have done is stamp that off first. Actually, let's do that on the other side and just see. Uh, what did I use? Sahara Sand. Sahara sand. I'm just going to stamp that off and just have a look. No, that's not the right colour. Hang on a sec. Is that the right one? No, that is crumb cake. Oh, Sahara sand I didn't open up. Lucky I tested it. Always a good thing to test first. I'll bring my chamois back in. Give that a clean. And let's just test this so I'll ink up my Sahara sand again and this time I'll stamp off first onto my cardstock and then oh that might have been better maybe we'll use this side so stamp off and then stamp on the cardstock that might be better it's lighter so it looks a bit more like mud now whereas that's that looks a bit muddy too but much heavier that might be a better let's try on that side all right so let's start with these beautiful um, bold colors so I've got a little bit of I'm actually going to turn them around so I can see all of the colors on the front of the ink pad because I've got the labels on the front there and then I know exactly which colors I'm using so I can tell you as I do them all right that one all right so this one is cherry cobbler so I'm just going to stamp some of these cherry cobbler leaves randomly and we don't want too many because we've got lots of colors to add here that's a beautiful pop of color look at that so gorgeous so I'll just stamp off the excess ink before taking it to my chamois because I'm trying to uh, not add too much ink to my chamois. Make sure you give that a good clean in between colors because these are really rich colors. So we don't want to be um, intermingling them. All right, I might go with the Cajun craze next. Let's try the Cajun. Yep, okay, good. And I'm gonna have all my leaves facing the same direction, I think. Well, as in falling, as if they're falling but not, um, I guess you could have them upside down in different ways. But I think I'm just going to have them like this. Okay, beautiful. Even those two colours together, aren't they gorgeous? So that's Cherry Cobbler and Cajun Craze. Oh, hi, Anne. How are you? Wow, yes, catching me live. That's amazing. I haven't seen you for ages. How have you been? So great to have you with us. Hi, Jenny. I just saw that you jumped on too. Um, things are good down there in Tassie. Fantastic. Good, good, good. All right, so now we're using a little bit of pumpkin pie. And we are going to overlap some of these as well. There we go, gorgeous. 
I should just leave my chamois out beside me, hey, because we're going to be doing a lot of cleaning between colours. I'm trying to keep all of the... <laughs> I'm trying not to make my whole chamois messy all at once. Uh, I'm not sure how long that's going to last for. <laughs> all right, let's use some Mango Melody. We'll add in... Let's see, which way will we go? Yep, so we've got these beautiful orangey tones coming through now. Gorgeous. Let's add another one down here. Look at that. So beautiful. And now we'll add in some brown tones. So I've got um, soft suede and uh, crumb cake. I think I'm going to use... Oh, now I re-inked. I'm having a look at my sample where I was playing with the colours here. Um, this, the crumb cake was a bit lighter and the soft suede was deeper but then I, I re-inked the soft suede and it became really really dark so I think I might go with the crumb cake which was this one make sure I'm inking up the right one yeah that's a good color that matches in well with the other colors gorgeous look at that Uh, we've got a little bit of blank space down there so that is looking pretty good so lots and lots of leaves falling there on the ground probably really didn't need that splattering in the background because you can barely see it but it does fill the blank spaces a little bit i guess now what color didn't we use we didn't use mary merlot Mary Merlot is a little bit lighter than um, Cherry Cobbler, but they are fairly similar. I'm just going to test some soft suede to see how dark that is looking now that that ink has settled. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. We'll just do a little bit here and there just to add in a little bit of depth of colour. We just don't want too much of that heavy colour. Oh, that one didn't stamp very well. Let's try that again. There we go. So just a little bit here and there to add that little bit of... Let's add a bit more here. Yeah. Great. So there we go. Yeah, you don't want too much of that dark colour to take away from the richness of all those other beautiful colours there. All right. Give that a little zoopity doop. I'm going to close the soft suede because we don't want to use any more of that. We might use that one for our sentiment though. And um, I'm just thinking I might leave that or I might put a little bit more here. So let's put a little bit of Merry Merlot. Let's check that. Test that. Yep. Merry Merlot is beautiful. We'll add a little bit of Merry Merlot here and there. Uh, let's see. Let's go there. Again, Merry Merlot is coming up a little bit darker than the Cherry Cobbler, so we don't want to be too heavy-handed with that one to take away from... Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll leave it there like that. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Good. All right, let's give that a clean. So that's our panel now, our stamped panel that I wanted to create. Um, now, of course, if you don't have all of these colours, just use what you have. Just choose some really beautiful natural colours. If you need some colour inspiration, jump onto Pinterest or Google and um, stamp, uh, type in autumn trees or something like that so that you'll get those, um, you'll see those beautiful rich colours. So there's our panel stamped up. Isn't that gorgeous? All those beautiful rich colours. And I know that we're entering into spring, but overseas on the other side of the world, they're entering into um, autumn, or as they say in America, fall. And um, I think any time of year is a great time of year to make um, nature-inspired projects anyway, regardless of the season, because I just think that they're so beautiful. And I love trees. I am a tree lover. Not a tree hugger, but I'm a tree lover. <laughs> I just love the richness in trees. One thing I do miss, actually, is um, visiting my mum's home country town in Mildura in Victoria. Um, 
it's so beautiful over there with all the the richness and they've got the beautiful murray river flowing through there and um, all the beautiful nature and the trees over there are just gorgeous i do miss that um, at the moment so hopefully eventually i'll be able to get back over there at some point um, but it might be a little while to come yet so let's pop that on there oh yes look at that now look that is looking beautiful already i'm happy with that already so that is awesome all right so i'm going to back this i think i'm going to add in a pop of color so i'm going to put a little bit we just want a little border so let's have a look what i've got over here i've got i'm thinking mary merlot might be nice actually maybe a little bit of mary merlot might be nice behind that let's have a look and see yeah that would be beautiful wouldn't it what do you think about the mary merlot we've got lots of different ones to choose from this cajun craze as well let's try a little bit of cajun cajun might be nice too let's see oh cajun is lovely too look at that sorry everything is sliding around here <laughs> i'm trying to get it to stay still we have a little border of cajun oh i like that i think i like that better um Rose said, oh, Deborah said, beautiful color combination. She's loving it. And Fee says, oh, yum. <laughs> That's good. Anne says, fabulous, looking gorgeous. Tina Marie says, beautiful. Oh, good. I'm glad you're all liking this. Um, Rose said, I love the trees in bright, but Tazzy has nice trees too. Ah, oh, lovely. And Leslie said, yes. Okay, awesome. I'm thinking Cajun craze. Oh yeah, Anne said, gorgeous, love the Cajun. Okay, awesome. I think I'm gonna go with that. Yep, Cajun better. Yep, everyone's liking the Cajun, great. Oh, hey, Navon, how are you going? Great to have you with us today. All right, so I'm gonna just add a little tiny border, so just a two millimeter border. So what I need to do, hang on one sec, I'll just move my inks out of the way, my little refills. So um, we're going to have the same width. So I just need to add two millimeters to either side. So that will now be 6.4, because the original piece was six. The piece that we stamped on was six centimeters. And so now I've cut this piece at 6.4 in the Cajun craze. And now if we lay those on top of each other, we've just got a little two millimeter border which will just give it that little pop and that little lift off the base. Again, this is being really slippery and difficult, but there we go. So yeah, so that will be, that will look good. That'll just give it, oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, I'm loving that. I'm glad I chose that one. Thank you everyone for helping me to choose that. Now, um, as you can see, this is where I started, but nobody's gonna know. Don't tell anybody, they won't know. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to um, add a bit of adhesive to the back and we'll pop those layers together. There we go. I'm just using some Stampin' Seal, which is super, super sticky, as you can see, sticking to my fingers. Oh, there we go. All right, so let's just line that up at one end first and get that border even, hopefully. And take that across. I'm so just taking my time so that I make sure that that stays nice and even. There we go. <gasps> Gorgeous. I love that. All right. So then I was going to pop that on here. I might put it up a little bit more towards the top. Because I need to put a sentiment. I'm deciding. Oh, I know what else. I was going to add some of the die cut. Um... Well, actually, we need some twine as well. We're going to wrap some twine around, I think. Or do we do this? But I also wanted to add some... Yeah, no, I think we need the twine. I also wanted to add some of those dye images. And I thought perhaps we can have some dye images popping out from behind there. Um, so just having a look to see what we have. We do have a leaf that is a similar shape. Maybe if we die cut a couple of those and see how they look... Oh, I just removed the adhesive from the sheet then. There we go. And also too, I love this. 
I love this um, twig or this branch. Let's do that. We could change it up and use some of the other leaves as well. Um, hmm. We'll try this first. We'll see how this looks first. All right, so I'll bring in my mini machine now. It's much easier to work with my mini on my desktop and then everyone can see um, what I'm doing as well. Oh, Navon says she loves the colors. Thank you, Navon. They're beautiful together, aren't they? Um, they're, oh, I'm not sure if you saw before, Navon, if you've just jumped on, I'm inspired by this photo that I took a couple of months ago, um, somewhere where I was and I saw this, uh, these beautiful trees and they had dropped all their gorgeous leaves and I took a snapped a photo at that time and thought, oh, that's going to inspire me down the track. And so that's my inspiration for today is um, those beautiful leaves. All right. Um, so I've got, oh, I could, we, all right, so we won't use Cajun because we've got Cajun in the background there. But we might use some of the other colors um, and die cut some of these. So I'm just going to chop up some of this cardstock. And normally I would use my scraps from my scrap bin, but I didn't pull out scraps. So let's just have a look and see um, what this will look like. So I'll just bring in my little plates for my mini machine. If you don't have a mini machine yet, um, these are a great little machine. So it's the stamp and cut emboss. It's the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. And they are a fantastic little machine to have on your desk um, they don't take up much space and they're great to work with they're also great for traveling for when we can travel again which we will be able to eventually down the track I'm sure we will um, yeah and they're just a great little machine and a lot, majority of our dies actually do work with it just some of the larger ones don't oh that'll be good look at that some of the larger ones, um, the solid shapes and things like that, they don't fit through this machine, but majority of the other ones do. And if you see the, if you look at all of the um, embossing folders and the dies in the annual catalog, you'll act, it actually shows you a little icon um, when they fit through the mini. It'll have a little mini icon, so you'll know if it's one that will fit through the mini machine. And there's special embossing folders made to fit this one because this one has a smaller feeding mouth than the large machine. So I didn't bring my die brush out. Um, actually, you know what I might do? I might just do a little cluster. I might not do them all the way across because I don't want to take away from this beautiful... Um, might do a little cluster in each on each side in the different colors um, yeah I don't want to take away from the, all that beautiful stamping so this might just this bit might just take a little bit of time so let's pop that over to the side a bit get all these little bits out of the way and my iPad video has frozen again but I'm still seeing your comments coming through so that's really strange all right, let's see. What else do we need? Let's get some. So we've got some pumpkin pie and some mango melody. So you know what? I'm just going to run them through my trimmer. To cut some quick little pieces. There we go. All right. So we might just do a few. Because um, I don't want to take too much time up um, with die cutting. There we go. So that's one. And I'm just going to do this to make it quicker. Rather than clean it in between each one, I'll just keep moving the die. <laughs> Oh, Leslie says she loves her mini. Yeah, they're great, aren't they? Oh, Cameron says hello. Hi, Cameron. Here we go. So we've got two of those ones, two of those ones. Let's do 
couple of the Mango Melody. Oops, my die slid then. Let's just slip that over, back over to where it should be. There we go. Um, Glenda says that is beautiful. She loves the effect, and Rhonda is love. Uh, sorry, Anne is loving this card. Thanks, Anne. Oh, this time the um, paper, all the cardstock got stuck in my die. So I'll just get my take your pick tool and poke the little holes. So each of our dies, if you're unfamiliar with them, they've got these little holes in the back that you can poke all the little bits out. There we go. So we've got some additional bits stuck in there this time. We'll poke them out. All the other ones all fell out. There we go. That's better. Okay. We'll do another one down here. And this card is going to be a special birthday card. So let me tell you a secret. If you can hear me, I'm whispering. <laughs> it's my husband's 60th birthday tomorrow. So this is his special card. But don't tell him. <laughs> Hopefully you could hear me. I was whispering. <laughs> tell me if you could hear my whisper. Could you hear me? All right. I'm going to... Um, uh, oh, Navon said she thinks the mini is going to be the next thing she buys. Fantastic. Oh, you'll be so pleased that you did. It's a great little machine to have. And so easy just to pick up and quickly whip over to your desk. Um, or keep on your desk, actually, even. Because it's so small. Oh, you heard me, Leslie? Good. Oh, and Fee said yes too. Yes. So this is going to be a surprise. Okay, so we've got, um, let's see the colours. So we pop our colours like this. We might need another, uh, another colour perhaps. We'll see. We'll see. Fiddle with these two. Oh, actually, we might get away with just the three colours. Because it is always good to have um, odd numbers of um, embellishments and things too. So if we added a fourth one, it might not be properly balanced. It might look a bit odd. So there we go. So my husband spent some time out in the garden on the weekend in the beautiful weather because it was absolutely gorgeous here on the weekend and he did lots and lots of gardening. He loves being out in the garden. So I'm thinking something like that. Something like that. What do you think? I just have to position these better, but yeah, something like that. There we go. Yeah, you think they look great? Oh, you think I need a brown one? You think I need to add some brown in there, Jenny? Okay, oh, let me see. I've got some, I have got some early espresso. We could try some early espresso in there. Let's cut a little bit of that. cut an early I'll just clean my plate off I've got all these little bits on my um, plate I'll just clean those off okay oops one left and we'll try some early espresso and see how that looks might need to add that in perhaps instead of one of the um, oranges maybe instead of the pumpkin pie perhaps Getting all these little bits everywhere. Oh, actually, the branch. What about the branch? I don't know if I can incorporate the branch as well now. Maybe. I might cut a branch as well. Oh, that piece isn't big enough. Let me cut another strip. Because maybe we can do something with the branch. That's the other reason I had um, the branch out and the early espresso ink because I thought perhaps we could do something with the branches. I really love them, they're so beautiful. 
Um, oh, everyone's loving this. Rose said wonderful. Glenda said fantastic. And the Bond said she thinks it needs some green. Oops. Sorry, everyone. I just banged my um, plates into my machine then. As I was lifting them over the top, I was trying to read comments as I was lifting it over the top. Where did my where did my branch go? Oh wait, is it in my die? Ah, it's stuck in my die. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, I was about to break out in song then. I shouldn't do that when I'm live, should I? <laughs> Can you tell I'm enjoying this today? I'm really enjoying making this card. There you go. I've been listening to a new um, album I downloaded the other day and I've got the um, the songs, one particular song stuck in my head. I keep on humming it all the time. Uh, I had a momentary lapse in uh, concentration and forgot I was live. You all don't need to hear me sing. <laughs> there we go. All right. Oops. Get that little bit out of there. Okay. So... All right, we've got a couple of things to try here. So let's see if we take out perhaps which one would we which one would we swap out the orange one? And what if we popped this one like this? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know about that one. That one looks a bit dark now. Or we could put some if I can pick it up. Hang on, what if we do this? What if we do this? It's not sure how it's going to sit well without overhanging the the um the edge of the card there. We could put that on there. I'm not gonna see it though. We did this something like that coming out from there or you know what else we could do hang on a sec what if we had this up the top we could do it like this have this up towards the top more like so then we could have the branch coming down like this or like this Like that and then we could have the leaves coming down as well perhaps or something I don't know I don't know tell me what you all think about something like that and we could have the branch coming out from there I don't think that looks right. What if we had that behind the branch? Hmm, not vibing it. I don't know. It's not looking right. Um, um, <laughs> Tina said, you sing beautifully. You'd be happy to hear me. <laughs> You're very kind. <laughs> um, Tina... Uh, Tina Johnson, we've got two Tinas on here. We've got Tina Marie and Tina Johnson. Um, Tina said, why don't you put the branch up the top and the leaves at the bottom so it looks like the leaves have fallen from the branch. Hey, great idea. That's a great idea, Tina. Let's try that. Clever. See, I love it when you all help me. We have the branch up here. We could even have the branch coming in from the side, couldn't we? And just trim that, trim that edge end bit off end bit oh, I can't speak now have that there like that and that can be overlapping like that yeah or coming down at a bit more of an angle ish and we can have that coming down and then we can have the leaves at the bottom would I put them on the opposite side or the same side probably opposite side hey otherwise it would look a bit funny and let's see. Something like that. 
kind of, kind of, sort of. I don't know, I think the yellow one needs to be on top because it needs to be standing out a bit more. Something like that. What do you think? Hmm. I don't know. Undecided. Maybe the branch on the front with the sentiment. Uh, <laughs> Tina says, I'm not just here for good looks, lol. <laughs> uh, um, Fee said, the branch popping out a bit too and bottom and bottom and the leaves on top of the and the leaves on top of the other leaves to pop them up out to pop them out oh on here like this like that and then we could trim them trim the ends off that one there oh now I'm not sure which way to do it. If we had them falling like this. Hmm. And what am I where am I putting the branch now? Do I need more branches? Maybe I need more branches. Maybe just one isn't enough. Should I cut another one? Maybe I need a couple of branches. Let's cut another one and just see. Maybe one on its own is a bit too sparse. A bit too sparse. Let's try this. Um, so, Tina Marie says, I think the leaves are too big for the branch. Yes, they're not really in proportion, so that is true. Um, Tina Marie said, I like the branch tilting tilting down over the stamped leaves. And Deborah suggested, how are you putting your sentiment on? Yes, well, that I haven't decided yet, Deborah. I'm thinking I'm probably going to put the sentiment on too. So I had an original idea, but it's with the sentiment. I was actually going to put it underneath on a separate piece. Um, but now I'm thinking it's going to need to be on a separate piece on top of the stamped panel. And I also am going to wrap some twine around that stamped panel. Um, so, yeah. Um, Deborah said your branch and leaves could overlap your sentiment. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do my sentiment first and then... Oh, look, that looks better already with two. <gasps> oh! What about coming down like that and then having these at the bottom? All right, well, okay. So let's do our sentiment. Let's stamp the sentiment and we'll go from there and then decide. We'll leave those all there, but I think we are getting closer. All right, the sentiment I've chosen today is the happy birthday sentiment from Artistically Inked. I wanted something um, not too big, but fairly sort of bold. Not too big, not too fancy. I didn't want a cursive um, font. I wanted something fairly plain. So I thought this one might be a good one to use. And if we um, stamp in, look, I've got some right here. No, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Sorry, we'll stamp in, we'll stamp on very vanilla perhaps in early espresso or we could do it in soft suede Yay. either or and i think i'll how wide is that let me measure that's only let's see so it's half an inch which is one point let's flick that over make that easier for me to read 1.2 um half an inch so if i went three quarters of an inch i might Cut a piece of cardstock three quarters of an inch wide. So then it's actually going to fit in my banners pick a punch because I think I'll banner the end. So I'll just cut this at three quarters of an inch. There we go. So 
so that is um, do, 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 1.9 centimeters so that's three quarters of an inch because then it will fit into my um, wait did I do that right I didn't measure that right hang on one sec that's not correct one inch half an inch three quarters of an inch Did I? Oh, I did. Why is that not going in? Maybe I'm looking at my measurements wrong. Anyway, that's the right, that's an okay width. That'll still fit through the punch. Let me move my mini out of the way for a sec. Um, yeah, okay. So I'll banner one end first. Um, which end do I want to use? I might use that one, I think. So I'm going to banner one end first. So I'll flip that over and just make sure I'm getting that lined up in the middle. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now I use this extra little piece as a measure for knowing where to punch the other end. I'll show you how to do that in a moment, but we'll stamp our sentiment first. I might try it in soft suede and we'll see how that looks oh you think the same brown as the branch deborah so the early espresso okay all right let's try early espresso match the, oh and tina just tina marie said the same thing match the branch match the stamp with the branch the sentiment yep okay thank you ladies all right so let's stamp our sentiment there we go, beautiful. I love it when my sentiments stamp beautifully the first time. <laughs> and then what I do is I use this little piece here to pop down and measure the distance between where the letters end on this end, where I've already um, bannered that, to the um, letters. And then I do that. I measure that I'm just doing it by eye on the other side and then where the straight edge is I line that up with the straight edge of the cardstock and that's where I'm going to put a little pencil mark so that I know that's where to trim my cardstock okay so I'm going to trim my cardstock there now where I've made those little pencil lines have to be careful that your ink is dry and that you don't smudge it because I just put my fingers on it then and now when I put that back into my punch to punch the other end that should be the right width so let's flip that over whoops I need to just line that up a bit better there we go beautiful so then we've got our banner um, a label a sentiment label banded at the same um, both ends all right so what I might do is I might run a little bit of ink around the edge of that now um, I'll get out my dauber for my early espresso just so that it lifts it a little bit off the background and it's not too stuck because there's so many other colors and everything else is distressed so we don't want um, our banner to be too stark in contrast to the rest of our card sorry about me reaching over there so let's just add a little bit of early espresso around the edges. So I've just brought out my early espresso dauber. As I was saying before, I like to have a dauber for every color. I'll just run that around the edges. This one gets used a lot too, actually. So this dauber is going to need replacing soon too. When you do this, it does tend to um, chew up your daubers a little bit because um, the edge of that cardstock is like pulling against the sponge on the dauber so you do end up having to replace them over time but I usually have mine going for quite a long time before having to replace them there we go Oops, let's add a little bit more just there on that edge there we go beautiful great um any other comments there yet? No? All good. I think I'm up to date with all the comments. Oh, Angie's back. She had to... Oh, you had to return to bed because you weren't feeling good, Angie. So what sort of spider... I was asking you before, Angie, what sort of spider you got bitten by? 
Um, I didn't see if you responded. I, I didn't notice that you had responded to my question, but maybe that was because you had to go back to, to bed. Um, all right, so there we go. So then I was thinking I'll pop the sentiment down there like that. Sentiment down there like that. I was going to wrap twine around here as well, which is why I haven't stuck anything down yet. But let's try these branches and just see. I had them had them sitting nicely before. Now I've put them down and they've separated on me. There we go. What if we had the branches coming down like that? That would look good. Oh, and then we could put these on top maybe. How would these look if these were on top of the branches? Perhaps. I know it's not... Um, Oops, it's not real life in proportion, but that's okay. It's a card. We're being creative. Let me stick that under there like that. What if we had that like that? Something like that. we did something like kind of like that I haven't got them sitting right but something kind of like that and then some twine I think I've got lots of twine here I've got linen thread and I've got the baker's twine but I think I want to use I don't know which one lots of lots of colors to choose from we could actually use the um the very vanilla which would match the cardstock might not stand out enough We've got crumb cake. Ah, oh, around the end of the branches with the twine. Hey, great idea, Jenny. Maybe that's where I need to add the twine. Around the ends of the branches. Okay, and would I tie a little bow on the top? I don't know, let's see. I'll do that and see how that looks. Oops, I lost my end. Hang on a sec. Let's try that again. I need to stick them down. I need to stick them all together first, though, before I try and add the twine on. Oh, my twine is deciding to twist itself around. There we go. Okay. Oh, no, it's still going to twist. It wants to be twisty, this piece. Oh, because I didn't run my bone folder along it yet. So what if we put that there like that? So we had like a bit of a... We could have it kind of like that. What do you think about that? Something like that? And I could have that wrapped around a little bit as well. Yeah, that could work. Maybe like that. And then I've got these beautiful embellishments as well. So I'm going to pop some of those on too. Probably some of the pewter coloured ones perhaps. Um, are the leaves a bit lost there? Hmm. Perhaps. Uh, Deborah likes the idea of the twine around the ends of the branches. Glenda says she likes it like that. Oh, awesome. And Rose said yes. They stood out more at the bottom. They did. All right, let's try them at the bottom. And perhaps if we've got the twine wrapped around the branches, then the branches wouldn't look like they're just sitting there on their own. Oops. Try that there, that there, and then, and you know what? I'm hoping that you're seeing this okay because my my um, camera or my, my video play, I'm seeing all your comments, but my video play is actually completely frozen. I'm just going to close that down and try opening that back up again because I'm not seeing, hang on a sec. I'm not actually seeing what you're seeing on the camera, so I'm not sure how it's looking on camera. So I'm just going to go back into it just one sec. Um, where were we? Here and here. Let's see if I can bring this up again. Oh, yay. Okay, now I can see what you're seeing. Good. My camera had frozen and it had been frozen for a while. I couldn't see what you were seeing. But now I can, so it's all good. Oops, 
So you're thinking something like that instead and putting this on putting this on the wrap that around the branches and then have a bow or a knot either or coming down like that. Something a bit more like that, do you think? They do stand out better down there. Um, yes, the leaves are not working, Jenny agreed. Okay, yep, yep. Um, camera feed looks good your end. Oh, that's good. That must just be my end, Deborah. Um, Anne said, you could have one leaf with the branches and the other leaves at the bottom. Oh, Deborah said, yes, in capital letters. She likes it. Under the sentiment, yeah. Oh, yes, much better. Tina Marie says, yes. T uh, Leslie likes it too. That is nice. And Jenny said, nice. Okay, cool. All right, let's go with that then. Awesome. So here's another question. Do you think, because originally I was going to wrap my twine around the stamped um, panel as well. Do you think I should still wrap that around and then just have the bow here? Like I could just wrap around a couple of pieces. Hang on, let's have a look and see. I was going to wrap a couple of pieces around the top of this panel. Or I could do it on here too because I haven't stuck that down yet. But I was going to wrap a couple of pieces around here like that. Whoop. So if I got that to sit still so that I can see, we can see how it all looks together. Ah! Except it doesn't want to stay. I need to weight it down. Hang on a minute. Let's see. I'll put my block on top of it. There we go. Stay. <laughs> we did that and then added these. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm singing again. Shush. <laughs> Stop singing. <laughs> we did that and then we could have the bow. I have, still have the bow on top of there as well. What do you think? I like that. I think that looks better. I think it gives it just a bit of something extra. And then we can still have the bow or the tied bit on top. String under the sentiment. But if we've got the bow up the top there, will that look funny? Not sure if that would look funny. Um, Rose said no. Would that be too busy? Maybe. There's a lot going on on here already, isn't there? I agree, Tina Marie and Rose. Leave it alone. Um, <laughs> we all have to learn when to stop. <laughs> oh, I love it, Deborah. <laughs> all right. Let's leave it at that then and we will put it all together. I won't add extra twine, I promise. All righty. Let's stick all this down. Okay, well, so we'll adhere out. Let me just move these other leaves out of the way. We'll adhere um, this one. I'm going to use some tear and tape this time because um, the texture in the bark embossing folder is very um, heavily textured. And so I want to make sure that um, this panel is going to be well secured to my card and it's not going to um, come off. There we go. All right. Oh, I can hear my feel my tummy starting to grumble. Getting hungry. I guess it is getting up to dinner time. Well, actually, it's really early for me for dinner time. We normally eat really late because um, our family's always coming and going. So, um, yeah. All right. Um, Two secs. I just need to um, I just need to let my girls know that our groceries are ready to be collected. I just got notified while I was filming that our groceries are ready to be collected, so my husband has to go and pick those up. Oh, he's just left. Okay, awesome. That's good. All right, let's go back to my Facebook live feed. All righty. Actually, before I remove those other ones, I'm just going to line this up first. So line that all up and make sure that is in the right spot where it needs to be. 
before I remove all of my adhesive. There we go. All right, now I can remove the rest. We'll do that side and then we'll do the other two sides at the same time. And I've lost all of your comments. Oh no, there they are. Good, good, good. Oh, Navon said it's 3 a.m. there. Wow, that's what time I went to bed last night, Navon. Or should I say this morning? <laughs> so I had a bit of a sleep in today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I did get woken up prior to that too. Um, or prior to me actually getting up, I got woken up. Um, so then I, because our neighbor decided that it was a good day to mow his lawn. And I was like, oh, seriously, of all days, I chose last night to go to bed at 3 a.m. And then he mows the lawn today, but that's okay. I just stayed awake for a little while, for an hour while he was mowing. And then I went back to sleep. So, yeah. Um, oh, Narelle's oh, here. Hi, Narelle. I didn't see you jump on. Great to have you with us. Narelle said, less is more. Yes, it is sometimes, isn't it? We can go crazy and overboard. And I guess I still had in my head my original idea with the twine, but because everything else changed, then it kind of wasn't going to work anymore. Um, yeah. Um, put the extra leaves inside the card. That is a great idea, Rose. Thank you for that. I will do that. Yeah. All right. Okay. So let's line this up. So I've got um, this with the tree, the leaves falling down because I want them to look like they're falling down. Um, now this is just going in the center of the card, top to bottom. Oh, hopefully, thereabouts. I'm not measuring, I'm just using my eye, so I hope I'm getting it straight. Um, there we go, like so. Oh, but I don't want to stick that down just yet because I've got to pop my little leaves under there, haven't I? So I've just got that resting there. It's not stuck yet. <gasps> Thankfully, I remembered my leaves. I'm just going to use a little bit of um, Tombow on the ends of these leaves and maybe up the center a little bit to hold them on in place here and there so I'll pop this little one under here like so then I think we had what did we have we had that one on the top I think didn't we or do we have them all overlapped I can't even remember how I had them now this one was in the middle though I remember that oh I'm getting hot and flustered now <laughs> hubby's just left to go and get the groceries so all is well we'll be able to uh, eat tonight <laughs> no, <laughs> it's all good. We actually, um, we had some food on the order for his dinner tomorrow night. So in our home, whenever it's somebody's birthday, they get to choose um, what we have for dinner. And because we're not eating out at the moment because of, um, you know, what's going on in the area with the lockdown and all, um, I am, I'm going to cook for him and he asked for a baked dinner. So we've got a leg of lamb coming in our order. And um, so that will be yummy. I think I need to overlap that one over the top. Um, yeah, so that will be yummy tomorrow night. So tomorrow, so he's gone out. So now I can tell you he's 60 tomorrow. Um, and we had originally planned a big party for him. But of course, with the lockdown and everything, that can't happen. So the girls and I um, and Jake will have a special dinner for him tomorrow night and the girls will decorate the house up they've already got plans um amber's been working on something really special which i won't share with you just yet because um it hasn't been given to him yet so we'll push all this down now so i've got my little leaves tucked in under there um yeah so it should be good we hope that he'll um he'll enjoy all of his birthday surprises that we have for him tomorrow being the big 6-0 not that he looks like he's 60 but he is he just doesn't look it all right so now we're going to adhere down our branches and then I might pop up my sentiment I think I'll pop that up I like to I usually like to pop up my sentiment on dimensionals I might do that first actually um, 
<laughs> I just saw your comment there, Tina Marie. Put the leaves under before you stick down. Yes, I picked myself up on that just before I went to stick that. Thank you for that, but I actually didn't see your comment um, quick enough. Thankfully, I remembered to do that. All right, we'll remove the backings there from our dimensionals. Um, oh, I better stick it up the right way. That would be helpful, hey? And we'll pop our sentiment down here. Um, I haven't added a 60 on here. I'm deciding whether or not I will or I won't. If I do, I'll add it later. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but I may do if, it, if it's going to work. I'll fiddle with that a bit later though. Um, what am I looking for? I'm looking for my glue sponge and my silicon craft sheet because I'm going to add, I'm going to do my little glue trick. I think I showed this last week. Was it last week or the week before? My little sponging technique with my glue because these little um, branches are very fine. And I could use fine tip glue pen, but instead I'm going to um, just use my little dabbing technique, my little glue dabbing technique. I'll move this over so you can see. I've got so much mess going on on this desk, it's ridiculous. <laughs> oh, hang on, let me move a few things. I don't like mess. All right, I'm just going to dab my little sponge. I've just got a little quarter wedge of sponge here. These are sponges that Stampin' Up! used to sell, but sadly don't sell anymore and I'm just going to add a little bit of glue not all the way to the ends because I want the ends to sit up off the card for a bit of dimension so I'm just adding the glue about halfway down and then we'll be able to stick them down I just want to do them both at the same time so I could line them up how I had them before so I like how I had them overlap, overlapping. And then we can adhere them to the card. Something like that. Have them coming down there like that. I should actually, I might position them. Oh, can I lift them? Yeah. Have them just going over a little bit over the center, towards the sentiment a little bit more. There we go. So attach them like that. Oh, I didn't wrap the twine. Ah, all right, let me just lift them up a little bit. Thankfully, that glue is forgiving because um, I was going to wrap the twine around that first. I'm just going to remove the kinks from my linen trim with my bone folder. And I'll wrap that around. So I might wrap it around, what do you reckon, around a few times? Would that look good? Let's go a third time. And then tie a, I don't know if I'm going to tie a bow or a knot actually. Let's see what it looks like. Because it's for a masculine card, maybe I should just tie a knot. What do you think? Should I do... So I've just got it wrapped around there like that, and I'll trim those ends off. Should I tie it in a bow or just in a knot? Maybe I should just do it in a knot. Let's... I'll tie a bow, and then we'll see how that looks. Oops. There we go. Let's see. We just need a little bow. We don't want a really big bow. Tina Marie thinks a knot. Card is coming along fabulously. Thank you, Anne. Everyone's been so helpful tonight, helping me to make my husband's special card for his 60th birthday. It's interesting, isn't it? You start with one idea and then it evolves. But this is actually turning out fairly close to what I had in my mind, um, just with the addition of a few little extra bits. But, um, yeah, I'm quite happy with how it's turning out. So I could do a little bow like that or do a knot. Oh, Tina Marie says a knot. Glenda says a knot. That's with a bow. And then I'll trim the ends. But, yeah, I'm thinking a knot as well. I don't like the bow, actually. Let's tie, not on a masculine card. Let's tie a knot in that and 
have that coming down. There we go. All right, I'll trim this up now. Oh, I've got an inky stamp over here that I haven't cleaned yet, and I just nearly put my hand in it. All right, I'll move that out of the way. Okay, so then we can decide whether or not to leave these long or trim them off short, shorter. I don't know, I might trim them a bit shorter. I don't want them the same length as the branches, actually. And then I always like to, with all of my um, twines, I like to separate the ends to add a bit of texture. Just separate those um, fibers. Just roughen them up for a bit of added texture. There we go. All right, and then I need to just trim off. I'll get my glue scissors, actually, because I put glue on the back of those. I'll just trim off the, um... there we go, that bit there. In fact, I liked it better with that on. <laughs> I probably should have left that hanging, but then I wouldn't have been able to fit it in the envelope. That'll be all right. All right, so we'll just give them a nice firm press. There we go. Okay, so now we just need to add some bling. And I was thinking of adding these pewter color well, I call them pewter, but I think it's, um, I think they call them bronze, bronze, gold, copper and bronze, I think is what Stampin' Up! calls them. Uh, and so we just need to add these and then we'll be done. And then I'll decide if I'll add a 60. I'm not sure. I don't want to spoil the card and make it too much. I guess it doesn't really need 60 on. I could put the 60 on the inside. That's what I could do. All right, so let's see. Um, I've got to work out where to put these. Maybe up there. A couple of little ones on the banner. Like so. Wait, I moved it, just move this one out a little bit. There we go, like that. What do you think? Do you think I need any more than that? Or should I add that one here instead? I think you'll lose it if I put it there. Nope, nope, nope. Isn't it funny? You can always just fiddle so much with, not down there, with your embellishments and, uh, oh, maybe up there in that corner. There, there, I think that's it. There you go. What do you think? I think we're done. There's our, our little card. And I will do the inside and I will add those extra leaves um, rows on the inside, but I probably won't do that now because I've been going a really long time already and I don't want to keep you um, any longer. Uh, so, yeah. Um, die cut leaves for the inside maybe. Yes, Narelle, I've got some spare ones left over actually. Here they are. So I will pop them on the inside. I always like to put... Um, an extra insert on the inside. So I'll probably do an insert of um, vanilla and then I'll add these leaves in there as well. I might um, add a little cluster in the corner perhaps or yeah, but I'll put them on the insert when I do the insert. But I won't do that now because I've kept you all such a long time. But there you go. What do you think? Thank you all so much for helping me. I'm really happy with how that turned out. Um, yeah, and thank you, Deborah, for stopping me before going too far with the twine. <laughs> uh, Rose says, love the card, lucky husband. Have to go now. No worries, Rose. Yes, it's right on dinner time. Have a good evening. Thanks for being here. Um, Tina Marie says, absolutely stunning. Glenda says, fantastic. Awesome. Great. I'm glad you all like it. So remember that... Um, the dies, and I've taken off a couple of the dies from there. Where have I put them? Here they are. So we've got the leaves there as well, and the little leaf. But you've got all these other dies in the die set, and the stamp set, you've got all these other stamps as well. So I've only used a couple of the dies and one of the stamps. Oh, I did use the background splatter as well to make that card. So imagine all the beautiful projects that you'll be able to make with this bundle and I know that some of you have already um, said earlier that you've already ordered this bundle and it's on its way so I can't wait to see what you create with it I'm really excited for you and um, 
Oh, Deborah said a very handsome card. Thanks, Deborah. Leslie said lovely card. Have a great evening. You too, Leslie. Um, and Anne says my hubby will love his card. Thank you so much. So yeah, look out for this one, the Gorgeous Leaves Bundle. Um, if you haven't er already ordered it, I hope that I've given you a little bit more inspiration um, for it. And remember the bark embossing folder as well, which is the one I used in the background there. So, all right, well, I'm going to quickly flip the camera back up um, so that I can say goodbye to you face to face. So bear with me for one moment while I just quickly do that. Here we go. Flippity flip. Oh, had that one done up a bit tight. That was a bit creaky, wasn't it? Sorry about that. Okay. Um, let me just change my cameras back over. There we go. So I'm up the right way. Beautiful. And adjust my lighting. There we go. Okay. Awesome. So there's my beautiful card. Thank you so much, everyone, for helping me. Oh, I had shadow on my face then. Let me try that again. Because I use this as um, you've probably all seen, or maybe you haven't if you haven't been to my YouTube channel. But I always take a little snapshot at the end to use this as my um, cover photo for my video. Um, so I always hold my card up and take a little, do a little smile. And I take a little snapshot to use in my, um, on my YouTube channel. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. Thank you all so much. And remember to use the inspiration that you have in the world because that was the inspiration. Look at that compared to the card. Can you see how I was inspired by that? Isn't that awesome? So keep your eyes peeled wherever you go. Take photos of what you see and use them as creative inspiration um, in your card making, your scrapbooking, all of your paper crafting. So thank you all so much for being with me tonight. I really enjoyed that and I enjoyed all of your help. Um, and I really love that. So I hope you all have a fantastic week. Now I'll be live again on Thursday morning at 11 o'clock um, and then again next Monday afternoon. So I hope you can join me one of those two times. Um, but have a great week everyone. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye.